with the inaugural session, and we have with us a very special guest. He doesn't need an introduction. He we have with us Dr. M. P. Punia, Vice Chairman AICT. Welcome, Dr. Punia. Thank you so much for joining us today. Namaste, namaste, namaste. And uh, we'll be hearing a lot from Dr. Punia. And uh, today's topic is about revolutionizing India's skill landscape to create a future-ready workforce. Over to you, Dr. M. P. Punia. Your vision on that. And good morning, good morning, Goswami ji. First of all, I'll be extending my my best wishes to the whole network, epic network, virtual network, which is connecting our our higher education, particularly state of Gujarat and state of Telangana. They are getting benefit, and very important issues you are you are taking through this one, the the education and skill conclave, which is being organized. Last year also, I was part of this one. And and in this conclave, when in between one year's time which we had, many changes in our education system has taken place. And foremost, um, uh, important action which has been taken by government of India, that is the national education policy. National education policy it has been brought up, and and there is very very um, um, large openings are being created for the students, for the teachers, for the academic institutes, even connecting our school education with higher education. and finally the products which are coming out from higher education how they can serve the country serve the nation the, the 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 industry serve the research organization how they can become strong base for the, the betterment of the country in enhancement of gdp of, of the nation so as per this national education policy foremost dream is that is the students who are coming out particularly from technical education the students which are coming out they should be technically sound foremost thing is technically sound when i'm saying technically sound their 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 minds on part their hands on part and their attitude all dimensions of human being if you are connecting they are becoming sound and if hands on part is quite strong then their 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 skills are, are sound so um, the the hands on part strengthening that hands on part Uh, and and bringing them at par with the, the the requirements of the global so it is being said that students who are graduating they should be technically sound and second one they should be professionally competent whatever profession they are entering they should be able to do justice with with that one moral values ethics everything all sort of attributes which are needed into the the, the personalities of the students it has to be so students should be technically sound they should be professionally competent and finally they should be socially relevant so purpose of this education is is certainly betterment of the society bringing happiness in the society bringing harmony in 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 whole universe that's that the, the target which has been 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 imagined in in our national education policy so the the purpose of this um, event which is being organized by apec and, and, and both the government it is very very important how we can fulfill the dreams of national education policy how the, the the relevance of our graduates who are coming out very large in numbers particularly in technical education because ours is a big nation and very large base of population very large number of youth we are having our population is around 1.4 billion and out of 1.4 billion roughly 50% population is less than 25 years of age but they are just like human beings for most dream of our national education policy and our academic institutes that how these human beings can be con converted into useful useful human resources so that gap which is there between human being and between um, and the, the, the final target is human resource so how that gap can be fulfilled that's the education that's the purpose of the education the, the relevant education it has to be provided to the student so that they can serve the, the, the whole globe up to the most more, um, maximum possible extent and we want this large population which we are having they should not only be able to serve our country but because whole world is just like a village they should be able to move anywhere across the globe and they should be able to prove that we people we indian are something very different our our core competencies our behavior our dedication our sincerity our team building capabilities our leadership capability we people are something different and we can change the world that type of confidence building we let like to have in our education system and when students are working anywhere across the globe if they can bring dollars for this country country will be growing only if we'll be having our strong 
um, uh, GDP base. If strong um, sources will be having in terms of our our strong finances, then only country will be growing. Our our health facilities, our infrastructure, our education, our communication system, everything will be growing. If this large base, large population, which is young and and they are they are they are um, uh, proving themselves across the globe, that type of environment we would like to have. As far as skilling is concerned. Um, even at school level now, at school level, the skilling component, hands-on component is getting added. Many a times, particularly in technical education, where acceptance of our graduates are coming into picture, when, when students are crossing the, the gates of our academic institutes after doing their graduations, when they are entering into the industries, industries are saying there are a lot of gaps. The, the graduates who came out from the academic institute, they have not been trained according to their needs. Every time we are we are listening these issues, every time um, um, the suggestions are coming and we are taking care of their suggestions also, but still many, many gaps are available. First and important thing industries are saying that the students who are graduating from our higher educational institutes, their content which has been been, been taught or the, the, the syllabus which they had or the curriculum which they had, that curriculum is not relevant to the needs of the industries. First and foremost, suggestion they are giving and they are saying you you change your curriculum they are saying industry requirements are something different whatever it is getting transacted into academic institutes those contents are different industries are saying we are competing at global level the skills which we need it is of global repute the technology which they are using the processes which they are using the course um, comparison if you are doing the quality of the products if it is being done then certainly the industries will have to compete at global level. Suppose they are manufacturing mobiles. Mobile may be manufactured in India or in Germany or Japan or UK, wherever it may be. Quality will have to be same. The cost will have to be same. So same um, cost and quality is there. It means processes which are being followed for the purpose of manufacturing, the processes are same. It means the human resource which is needed for, for maintaining that quality and cost and, and um, 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 giving that productivity then certainly the confidence level of those graduates should be of that repute. So the foremost requirement of industries are the, the, the training of the, the students should be in such a way so that latest technology, industry four relevant technologies, emerging areas which are there, those areas training, it has to be provided into our academic institutes. Industries are saying that our needs are the application of artificial intelligence, application of data sciences, cyber security, robotics, 3D printing, machine learning, deep learning. In those areas, they are saying we need our, our students. But for that purpose, first of all, we like to change our curriculum and not only changes in curriculum, according to that one, teachers also it has to be trained. If teachers are not competent, the, the dream of the industry is not be fulfilled. So the, the relevance of, of, of the, this curriculum as well as confidence building of the teachers are very, very important. National education policy is saying, first of all, improving the hands-on part of the students, even at school level, and imparting training to students in emerging areas, even coding at, at school level. National education policy is saying that it has to be started so that when they are entering into higher education, when, when um, 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 the, the ecosystem which is needed from school to, to, to higher education, the connect which is needed, that connect can be can be can be established and seamless uh, um, transition of, of, of school going students to higher education institutes. That seamless transition it has to be. And finally, when they are entering into the industries, there should not be any gap. So the, the industry requirement, the national education policy expectation that is curriculum, it has to be relevant to the industries. And according to that one, teachers it has to be trained. Teachers should be empowered. Second one, industries are saying that practically students are weak. Theoretically, they may be quite sound, their cognitive skills can be can be strong, but has, as far as hands-on abilities are concerned, as far as doing work practically by their hands, creating some useful products for the betterment of the society, industries are saying practically students are weak. They are saying even civil engineering students, after doing graduate graduation, they are unable to read engineering drawings. So that is basic thing, fundamentals. So, they, they are saying that even the fundamentals of these trends are weak. They are unable to read engineering drawing. Practically, they are quite weak. The, the curriculum is outdated. Even the assessment system, examination system, the, 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 the industries or research organizations are saying the way trends are being assessed on the basis of their remembering capabilities, they are saying there is no use. 
we exactly want that whatever knowledge they are having, how they can apply that knowledge. They are saying outcome based education. Industries are saying it is not important what subjects they have studied, what branch they have studied, what percentage of marks, what CGPA they are having. Industries are saying the, the foremost thing is what exactly they are able to deliver, what they can do. And finally, they are saying about the attitude of the students. Their, their, their sincerity, their dedication, taking ownership of the organization where they are they are entering, their, their communication skills, their team building abilities, all sort of soft skills which are needed. Industries are saying there is a gap. The, 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 the way they let to work, the, the way they let to behave, the way they, they let to give the results, there is a gap. So many, many areas are there related to soft skills, related to hard skills. That alignment, it has to be done. The, the, the uh, assessment of the students, not only on the basis of remembering capabilities, but what they can create, what innovative ideas they can have, how their entrepreneurship skills, how they can provide the solutions of the, the, the problems which society or industry is having. All these, these, these areas, industries are saying. And in these areas, according to the suggestions of the industries, AICT has started, started working. First of all, we have revamped the whole curriculum. The complete curriculum of, of engineering, of management institutes, of polytechnic, we are revamped. And so, so the all sort of new areas, the emerging areas, which was the need of, of the industry, we have we have incorporated into this one. Even even value-based education, the induction program for the students, six months mandatory in, internship for every student. Every student is now expected to, to enter into industries while they are doing their graduation. So that exposure they let well so that they can become the confident. So the um, whole curriculum it has been changed with incorporation of in, in this industrial training and some some labs, virtual labs, the, the lab component it has been increased and same time number of credit, credits it has been reduced earlier for doing BTEC, the number of credits which were supposed to be earned by the students that number was 220. Now it is 160 only. So some space it has been created. Only the, 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 the mandatory core subjects it has been kept, which is very, very essential, or some multidiscipl uh, multidisciplinary uh, announcement in the conference of, of the students, which, which it has to be. Those subjects it has been kept into this one. So when number of credits it has been reduced, it means students will be having sufficient time for thinking, for planning, for delivering, for designing some ideas, bringing those ideas on the papers and giving some useful output so that space is available. Pressure on the students has been reduced. We have, we, have, we have brought one complete examination policy. In that examination policy, the remembering component, it has been removed. Only the application part and the way the students are comprehending the problems, those components, it has been, been brought. Thousands of teachers and not thousands, I'm saying 1.5 lakhs teachers last year, we have trained only in emerging areas. So now teachers are also ready. And while we were imparting training to teachers related to emerging areas, industry was also the partner. So industry is partnering, the, the help is getting extended. And during the COVID time, because face to face, any sort of connection was, was impossible. So the use of technology, it has become a big dream. It has become a, a, a very, very helpful for everyone and whole world, world we could connect. In fact, for empowering our teachers, all NITs, all IITs, majority of the industries were having expertise in different areas and external ex experts outside India experts we are connected we have brought them at common platform and around 1.5 lakh teachers it has been trained into emerging areas that was just like a world record we got one world record AICT has got one world record for imparting training to 1.5 lakh teachers in these emerging areas same time strengthening the pedagogical skills of the teachers. We are having now mandatory teachers training policy, online eight modules related to announcing the capabilities of the teachers, how teaching it has to be done, how they can plan their contents, how the contents can be delivered, how question paper setting can be done, how laboratory classes can be engaged effectively so that learning can become effective. So mandatory teachers training policy online. It is again use of technology. Whatever we people have done during last one and um, half years like this one. So majority of the initiatives which we had, that is use of technology. And we people are now confident, even in time to come, probably some 50-60% knowledge can be imparted online, only where hands-on part when, skill, when the hard skills are needed, 
there the, the, the entry of the students into the academic institutes will be due to that one because lesser time they'll be coming into academic institute the cost of education may also go down the national education policy is saying access of the education higher education should be for everyone roughly 50 percent gross enrollment ratio it has to be say under students are passing through 12th class examination at least 50 percent students should be able to enter into higher education the equity depending upon the capabilities of the students education should be provided third one they are saying quality of education whatever education we, we are giving that should be relevant and that should be of great use fourth one as per national education policy education should be affordable when we are saying affordable the cost of the education has to brought down and it will be brought down only if we'll be using technology and and same time accountability of everyone teachers are accountable the 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 the, the industries are accountable even the management people who are who are who are, who are imparting education to these students particularly in higher education they should be accountable so accountability is also foremost integrating everything bringing confidence in the minds of the the the, the, the teachers and bringing industries at a common platform and same time schools also when when we are we are expecting quality students from student, um, schools then certainly hand holding with the students with higher education it has to be so what aict has done during last last six months we have started imparting training to school teachers also particularly in emerging areas particularly related to vocational education particularly how internship to the school students can be given and how assessment of the students can be done and same time, innovative right. skills of the students that work also we have started some 30,000 teachers as on date, some 30,000 teachers are connected online for taking the, the, this ideas, how innovation um, 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 uh, environment can be created into our schools. Their higher education is helping our schools. So role of higher education, connecting our schools as well as with industries that also it has been started. And probably these type of initiatives which has been taken by APEC, probably it will be strengthening these bonding which we are having. So if everyone we are joining hands all together, alone AICT can't do miracle, alone one teacher can't do miracle. If everyone will be joining hands all together, if we can combine our all strength, if we can integrate our all strength, if all resources which are available, maybe soft resources, maybe hard resources, if we can integrate that one, and, and foremost task it has to be the, the students should be confident and they should be able to do wonders for the betterment of the country. Best wishes for giving opportunity. Hope this will be a wonderful, wonderful initiative of, of APEC and, and both the state governments. Thank you so much, Dr. M. P. Punya, Vice Chairman AICT. It's always uh, it's all always like a learning for me whenever I listen to your uh, visionary speeches. And uh, as you rightly said, that is a time for um, integration of uh, various approaches together, uh, coming of best of the minds together for a common goal. And national education policy actually talks about that. You talked about uh, access to education, quality education, affordable education, and add to that uh, the importance of accountability in you know, the entire process. And in all these things, uh, when you talk about imparting education to teachers or training to teachers, how well Technology has played an important role in last one and a half year. We all know it has been a game changer. And you talked about collaboration. I can assure you that APEC News Network will be ready to join hand with uh, AICT in whatever capacity is needed. Uh, uh, we'll be there to collaborate with you and uh, we'll surely try to help AICT to realize their goal in a very small capacity of APEC News Network. But we are there, we'll be there joining hands with AICT as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Ebdi Bunia. Thank you so much for joining us today in the inaugural of second edition of Global Education and Skill Conclave. And from AICT, let's move to another very important ministry and department of education ecosystem per se, that is Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. We have a special guest with us.